Welcome to Live and Grow, I'm Feroz, and if you're new to foraging, this is the video for you. I'm going to introduce you to 10 wild edible plants that you can find in the spring and are super easy to identify and taste great too. So let's get foraging. First up, we've got hedge garlic, also known as Jack by the Hedge. You'll spot it by its heart-shaped leaves with serrated edges and its cluster of white tiny flowers if they're in blue. It's really common in hedgerows, woodland edges, and along paths. In its first year, it grows in a rosette close to the ground, but in its second year, it shoots up with a stem like you see here. When you crush the leaves, it has a subtle aroma of garlic, and it's a great addition to things like salads. If I'm honest, it took me a while to appreciate this one. Many people love it from the off, but it was much more of an acquired taste for me, but now I do munch on it all the time. Down here in this field, we've got one of my favorite grassland plants, sorrel. You're going to find sorrel in grasslands. It has these elongated leaves that resemble an arrowhead. If you look at the base here, it has these pointed tails. The other common plant that has these pointed tails is actually lords and ladies, which is poisonous. But if you compare it to this picture I've put on screen, they do look very different otherwise. This one's got a really lemony kick, perfect for spicing up your salads and soups. I often munch on this when I'm walking with a family or on a hike somewhere. At this time of year, it's easier to spot sorrel because it throws up these tiny little red flowers, which makes it easier to spot it from a distance. I can't help but have a munch on this. I really love this stuff. Our third plant is hogweed. It's easily recognized by its large lobed leaves. And in a few weeks, these will produce an umbrella-like cluster of white flowers. You'll find hogweed enjoying itself in fields and meadows and hedges. It's really common. Its flavour resembles a mix of celery and parsley to me, but as you know, taste can be very subjective. The leaves do vary depending on the plant. At this time of year, it's the young shoots that you want. These can be cooked a bit like spinach or even asparagus. I tend to throw them in a pan with a bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and that's about it. The other thing to be mindful of is that it does have a cousin, giant hogweed. Now this is not a friendly plant and you want to stay away from it. It does look similar, but giant hogweed firstly grows much larger, the leaves are shiny and much more serrated. So what you can do is wait until the plant's opened up a little bit so you can identify the leaves properly. Now, if you're not new to the channel, you'll know that I love wild garlic and wild garlic loves damp woodland areas. Look for its long pointy leaves and beautiful starlight flowers at this time of year. The garlicky smell is really distinctive too. You often smell it before you see it. I'll link in another video I made on how to identify this successfully and also give you a few ideas on how you can use it. If I had to choose one plant to forage, this would probably be it. The flowers do pack a bit of a punch, but I find them delicious. All of the plants today are coming from this one beautiful location. Next up is our friend the dandelion. Now I'm sure you've seen dandelions absolutely everywhere, but you can spot it by its rosette of tooth-like leaves and those cheerful yellow flowers. It's really common in grassy areas, and as you're probably aware, you often see it growing up through pavement cracks and whatnot. What you maybe didn't know is the whole plant is edible. The leaves have a slightly bitter taste, especially the older ones, but they can really shake up a salad. If you were to dig up the root, you can actually use these a bit like parsnips too. You can also ground them into a coffee. Once the flowers have been pollinated, they'll turn into that seed head that we all recognize. Say hi to cleavers, or as you may know it, goose grass. It's pretty sticky, but don't hold that against it. The young shoots are pretty good and be, can be cooked as a leaf vegetable, although it's not that great eaten raw. A nice bit of trivia is that goose grass is actually in the same family as coffee. And when these actually come to seed, you can roast those seeds, grind them, and make yourself a nice brew. As you see here, they have fairly small pointy leaves and will come up with tiny white flowers. One of my personal favorite spring flowers is the primrose. I've got some here behind me. Did you know you can actually eat this too? Primrose has distinctive pale yellow flowers and tongue-shaped leaves with crinkly edges. They're pretty easy to spot. You can add both the leaves and flowers to salads for a splash of color, you often find it growing in woodland and along paths. Another one of my favorites that I love to have a little nibble on when I'm out and about is wood sorrel. Let's take a look. Its delicate heart-shaped leaves arranged in threes are its signature look. Soon it will have tiny white or pink flowers to add to its charm. These have a really nice lemony apple peel flavor. You can't do a whole lot with these, but they are really nice just to munch on when you're out on a hike or walk. As you can see, these look a lot like clovers but only the wood sorrel is gonna have that lemony taste to it. 
Burdock is our ninth stop on this foraging tour. This plant sports large broad leaves that are heart shaped at the base and fuzzy underneath. You can cook up and eat the leaves on this one but they can be quite bitter. Really it's the root that you want here and in China they use this a lot. I've actually once made little chips out of these which have been really quite nice. Remember, if you're going to dig up some burdock, you are going to need landowner's permission before you do. And last but definitely not least, our old friend the bramble, or as you may know it, the blackberry bush. Now the berries are not ready yet, but did you know you can actually eat the young shoots in the spring? You're going to want to peel off the outer layer with a knife. If you don't do this, it is quite chewy and stringy. But once you get to the inside, it's actually pretty tender. I've heard people say that it tastes like blackberries, but to be honest, it doesn't taste like that to me. If anything, I would say maybe a little bit nutty, but it is fairly mild if you ask me. The bramble's thorny arching stems are pretty unique, so it's hard to mistake it for anything else. If you're like me, you like your carrots, but when you're picking anything in the carrot family, you have to be 110% sure you know what you're looking for. So it's bonus time. Over here, we've got the hemlock water drop pool. It's essential to talk about this one because it's actually pretty common, especially in wet areas like we have here. It is also one of the UK's most poisonous plants. If you were to crush the leaves, it would give off a fairly unpleasant smell. You can recognize it by its stems, which have this purple blotching. The leaves of this plant are pinnately compound and appear pretty fern-like. But to be honest, to a novice, these look really similar to many other plants, which are also in the carrot family. When it flowers, the flowers come up small and white and growing clusters on an umbrella type stalk which is really typical of the Apiaceae, which again is the Cara family. Remember, hemlock water droplet is highly toxic and is likely to be fatal if ingested. It's always wise to just err on the side of caution when members of the carrot family are involved. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning with me today. If fungi ID also interests you, then you might find this video super interesting. It's seven ways on how to identify the turkey tail mushroom. Cheers.